the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Most High anointed thee king over Israel. And the Most High sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Most High, but didst fly upon the spoil, took all their spoils, and this evil in the sight of the Most High? And Saul said to Samuel, Yeah, I have obeyed the voice of the Most High, and have gone the way which the Most High sent me, and have brought Ahag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed. The sacrifice to the Most High died power in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Hath the Most High as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? That was something that didn't take away sins anyway. What he wants to do? As in obeying the voice of the Most High? That's why I say that he got controversy with the Lamb because they don't know the Most High. He ain't being taught truthfully. Does the, has the Most High as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Most High? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. You know? Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Most High, he have also rejected thee from being king. And Saul said unto Samuel, so he said, hey man, you're not going to be king no more. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned. I have transgressed the commandment of the Most High and thy words. Because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now he's blaming the people again. So that's what people will do. They'll find any reason to find fault in a situation and blame someone else for their downfall. Now, therefore, I pray thee, pardon my sin and turn again with me that I may worship the Most High. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee. I'm not going with you, man. Thou hast rejected the word of the Most High. Y'all say y'all could y'all could do whatever you want to do. You ain't got to follow the word of the Most High. You can do whatever you want to do, however you feel. Follow your heart. He's, look, what he says, as Simon said unto Saul, I will not return with thee. Like people want you to roll with them. Some people you can't roll with. But thou hast rejected the word of the Most High. And the Most High have rejected thee from being king over Israel. You better hear what's happening. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle and, he, and it rent. So he went to turn away. And Samuel said unto him, tore his mantle, The Most High has rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day and has given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent. But he is not a man that he should repent. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now, I pray thee. He crying out now before the elders of my people and before Israel and turn again with me that I may worship the Most High thy power. So Samuel turned again after Saul and Saul worshiped the Most High. Then says Samuel, bring ye hither to me Ahag, the king of the Amalekites or Amalekites. Bring me that king Ahag. Of the Amalekites. And Ahag came unto him del delicately. He, he tiptoed unto him. He know what time it is. And Ahag said, surely the bitterness of death is past. He just seen all his people killed. So he said, hey, surely the bitterness of death is past. And Samuel said, as thy sword have made women childless, so shall thy mother be childless among women. And Samuel hewed Ahag in pieces before the Most High in Gilgal. Meaning he chopped them up in pieces before the Most High in Gilgal. Because remember what the Most High said in verse 3. Don't forget. Some of y'all might have forgot. Now go and smite Amalek. 
and utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not, but slay me, kill both man and woman, infant and suckling, oxen, sheep, camel, and ass. Verse 33, and Samuel said, As thy sword has made women childless, so shall thy mother be childless among women. And Samuel hewed Ahag in pieces before the Most High in Gilgal. He chopped them up in pieces. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house to Gibeah of Saul. And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul. And the most I repented that he had made Saul king over Israel. See, I'm sorry I didn't made this cat king over Israel. So, you know, the most I have, and he told you, look at, because uh, he, he said, I mean, go to Exodus 17 and 16. Understand, understand this. So y'all look at a lot of things that's going on in the world. Ain't going to be no peace because the most I said this. Exodus 17 to 16. For he hath said, this is the Most High said this, because the Most High has sworn that the Most High will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. So no, it's not going to be no war over there, what they call the Middle East. There's going to be no peace, excuse me, no peace over there. Because the Most High said you have war with Amalek from generation to generation. That's what he said. So, and we here because, you know, Most High said we're going, we have to have, whoever's over us have to be of our own nation. Go to Jeremiah, the 30th chapter, and verse 21. It says, and their nobles, The ones that's over us shall be of themselves. Will be of ourselves, of the twelve tribes of Israel. And their governor shall proceed from the midst of them. You see? And I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. But who is this that engages his heart to approach unto me? Said the Most High. These other nations, especially Esau, claiming to be. The Most High, claiming to be of my shot, y'all was shot. But understand this, Acts 5, 29. Acts 5 and 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey the Most High rather than men. I hope you hear it clearly. Because when he gives... In the order of commandments, we got to abide by it. Look at Malachi 3 and 6. A lot of y'all want to think that somewhere or another, you making him be the way you want him to be. He is who he is. Malachi 3 and 6. For I am the most high. I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob, you twelve tribes of Israel, are not consumed. You see, we're still here. Hebrews 13 and 8. Hebrews 13 and 8. That's the most high. What about Amashia Yahweh It says, Amashia Yahweh you know the Savior, the Messiah, the same yesterday and today and forever. So, and he said in St. John 10 and 30, I and my Father are one. They agree. He's not going to go against the Most High. So what about the age in the military? Or the Numbers, the first chapter. Numbers, the first chapter, and verse 2. 
Take you the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel after their families by the house of their fathers. So the father determined the families, who the family is. By the house of their fathers with the number of their names, every male by their poles. So you're polling or you, you counting the number of men, the males, right? From 20 years old and upward, all that are able to go forth to war in Israel, thou and Aaron shall number them by their armies. See, 20 years old and upward, not 17, not even, you know, basically even getting out of high school, but 20 years old and older. That's how old you were in going into the army. Numbers 26. Numbers 26 is what we're looking at going into the military. We're looking at civil laws tonight. Um, numbers 26 and 1. And it came to pass after the plague that the Most High put on us, that the Most High spake unto Moses and unto Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saying, Take the sum of all the congregations of the children of Israel from 20 years old again and upward throughout their father's house, all that are able to go to war in Israel, warriors, from 20 years old and up. But the starting age is 20 years old. And Moses and Eleazar, the priest, spake with them in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Take the sum of the people from 20 years old and upward, as the Most High commanded Moses and the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt. So he started counting them. Those that were 20 years old and upward were the warriors, the men of war that was going to go to war. Um, from there, let's look at um, Numbers 14 and 29 to 39. Numbers 14, 29 to 39. Your, this is what he told the adults. He said, your carcasses, your dead bodies, shall fall in this wilderness. And all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me. So he's dealing with them. 20 years old and upward, say they all going to die in the wilderness. Because they murmured against the Most High. So I better watch out. A lot of people don't realize how they murmur against the Most High when you told things that's spiritual pertaining to our life situations. Doubtless, you shall not come into the land. And we're looking to go to the land. But you say, doubtless, you shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. See, the only ones coming into the land. Joshua and Caleb. See? That's like he told us. Hold up. See, people be getting all big-headed, man. We can't get big-headed at all. No kind of way, shape, or form. Don't get, don't start thinking that you all that, man, because you don't know, you don't know how what's gonna be the deal. You don't even know what's gonna happen tomorrow. This is what he said in Jeremiah 3 and 14. Jeremiah 3, 14. He said, turn, O backsliding children, O rebellious children. Talking about us, the children of Israel. Said the Most High. He said, for I am married unto you. That's why he told us in um, Jeremiah 6 and 2, I have likened the daughter of Zion, the 12 tribes of Israel, we are Zion, to a comely, a beautiful, and delicate woman. So it's symbolic. That's why Masha Shai gave the analysis of the uh, 10 virgins and the bridegroom, you see? And they represented the children of Israel. That's why he said in Jeremiah 3, 14, Turn, O backslided children, said the Most High, for I am married unto you, 
and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. See? And he said, and I will give you passes according to mine heart. Remember he says, no knowledge of the Most High in the land. He said, I'm going to give you passes according to his mind. How are you going to find that? In the scriptures. Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. He said, I'm going to give you passes according to mine heart, to the Most High's mind, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Remember he said, with all that getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing, but with all that getting, get understanding. And wisdom is the proper application. How you apply this knowledge in your life to change. Going back to Numbers 14. Now that we know this, you're going to take one of a city and two of a family. He told him in verse 29 of Numbers the 14th chapter, he said, Your carcasses, your dead bodies shall fall in this wilderness. And all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Doubtless, ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. Two men, that's it, Joshua and Caleb. But your little ones, which ye, should, which ye said should be a prey, then will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. See, they're going to know the land which they despised. But as for you, all the adults, and we came out 600,000. Army, 600,000. He killed 599,998 men. Killed all the women. It's the only adults coming out is the, is the little children, the children that they have, that they want to make a prey, sacrificing them in the fire, man. It's terrible, man. Verse 30, but as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness. So your dead body's going to fall in this wilderness. And your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years and bear your whoredoms. Until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. Till all of you dead. That's what he's saying. See, your children going to go in this wilderness 40 years until all of your carcasses, all your dead bodies be done fell in this wilderness. After the number of the days in which he searched the land, he searched the land 40 days. Even 40 days. Each day for a year. Hear that? Each day for a year, he gave them a year for every day that they searched the land. Each day for a year shall you bear your iniquities, even 40 years, and you shall know my breach of promise. Most of all, we say you're going to want, that's another way he said, you're going to know that I am the most high. I the most I have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me. In this wilderness, they shall be consumed, and there shall and there shall they die. So think about it. We were taught this. We were taught this, and we still want a king. Get the Most High, the middle finger. He said, "I ain't rejecting you, Sam." He said, "We just read. They rejected me, but we knew this because we taught our children from generation to generation about the Most High." What he had done. And here we are. Going to just miss him. He would have said, I the most I have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me. In this wilderness, they shall be consumed and there they shall die. It's going to be a lot of people going to be weeping and gnashing. That's what my second shot tell us. Be weeping and gnashing because people are not going to really come back to the real truth. They're not going to really learn it, live it, and apply it in their life. It don't take a little bit of something to take you off track next thing you know you're rolling with the devil. Just like that. And it's what's sad is people don't even realize it. That's what's real sad. 
And he's just waiting on you. You got all these spirits that's waiting on you. You got cleaned up. Then a spirit is waiting on you to, to not do right. Then here, they, here it comes. Go out and, like I said, go get a complete number of spirits worse than him. And they're going to come and dwell with you. <laughs> and it, your end going to be worse than it was before. So what he's saying. It's our last chance. You say, I the most I have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me. In this wilderness, they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. And the men which Moses sent to search the land, who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up a slander upon the land, even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land died by the plague before the Most High. So I killed them. They oh no, the Anakins, they got they too the giants, they're too big. We can't take the land. Scaring the people. Like a lot of y'all probably scared about what's getting ready to go down. And us getting the kingdom. But it's written, you better have faith in the most high. You better have some type of relationship with the most high. Like you say, he got a controversy with the land. Why? Because they don't know him. You already laid it out how it's supposed to be done. You see, even those men that did bring up an evil report upon the land, the most I said, just the land I'm giving you, go search it out. This is what I'm giving you, go search it out. You're going to come back and have negative against what the most I have said he's given us? Like right now, we wait for the kingdom. It's already prepared for us. It's just a matter of us getting ourselves together. And we are, as we get ourselves together, and those that's going to be really locked into what the kingdom is going to be about, because a lot of you are not ready for the kingdom. Because y'all Edomanized. Y'all just like this world would have you to be. Esau's the end of the world. You see what power of the earth. He's he the God of the air. The power of the air. So y'all listening to all these things and all these spirits can come in to have you go to hell with them. But all nations not going, you know, into that fire because you got to have a remnant of all the nations that's going to be redeemed to be able to work in the kingdom and learn by the rod of iron of Mashiach Yahweh Shai, which is his laws what I'm going over you either going to learn them now you're going to be made to learn them or you're going to be put to death because you ain't going to want to serve them you ain't going to serve them you don't want to do what's right then you're going to be wasted it says utterly wasted as it says, Isaiah 60 and 12. So, verse 38. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Nephilim, which were of the men that went to search the land, lived still. He killed all of them that went to search the land and came back murmuring against, excuse me, against the land that the most I said he's going to give us. And he gave us that land of Canaan. The same land he said, search out, he gave us that land. And he killed seven nations, mightier than us. That's where we at. I mean, and that's what the end going to be like. I went over it many a times with you. No matter what you think in your wildest dreams, it's going to be just as the Most High said. It's going to be, without a shadow of a doubt. Not in my mind. I don't have no doubt at all. And Moses told these sayings unto all the children of Israel. And the people mourned greatly. Yeah. Because they, what did they do? Look. When you look at us, man, and you start to get all big-headed and thinking that we're this and we're that and we all that because we've, uh, Learn a few scriptures, you better think again, man. Because we did them wrong. Sincerely. As you hear, you say, all you need is me. 
And everybody call on the most high, calling on the most high. Y'all call him God, but you don't know him. And we dismiss him all the time from our existence. And then when we, he turned his back on us, and then we deal with this heavy burden of these enemies coming down on us, and you want to cry to them. And we didn't want to listen to him. We didn't have time for him. So why should he have time for us? It's going to come a time though. And we have no choice. But to cry to him. And if you ain't used to it. And your pride is too much. That's you the ones that my are going to be welling and gnashing of teeth. But we're going to follow what the most I say. And not what man says. So let's look at. Um, taxes. Go to Leviticus. The 19th chapter. And. Verse 13. And wages, you know, when should you get paid? That's what it's going to tell you when you should get paid. Uh, Leviticus 19 and 13. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor. Listen, when we're supposed to get paid. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. So you're supposed to go to work and get paid. That's what I say, when we say the way the laws of the Most High are and the way the laws of the lands are, that's why the Most High say you have a controversy with the land. Because there's no truth in them. Just the truth. You're supposed to work and get money enough to go home to take care of your family or take care of your business, whatever you got to take care of. You hear what it says? Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. So you work a day, you get paid that day. You work the next day, you get paid that day. That's the law. But they changed it. To represent how they want it to be. You got to work a whole month sometime. People that get a job got to work a whole month before they get their first paycheck. Work two weeks. They always put a um, a week in the hole. Or something that they hold back from you before you get your first check. You see it's against the laws of the Most High. Uh, Deuteronomy. <coughs> 24th chapter. And verse. 14. Deuteronomy 24 and 14. Thou shalt not oppress and hire a servant that is poor and needy. Whether he be of thy brethren, he let you know this our law. He said, whether it be of our brethren or of thy strangers that are in thy land within thy gates. Even other nations. He said, hey, when you supposed to oppress a hired servant, we hired him to do a job that is poor and needy. See, at his day, Thou shalt give him his hire. At his day, work a day, and you pay him that day. Neither shall the sun go down upon it. See? You work the job, you don't allow the sun go down that you hold on to his money. Or oh, that's sin. Did they could do that here? I don't think so. To change everything to be like the laws of the most high? Thou shalt not oppress a higher servant that is poor and needy, whether he be of thy brethren or of thy strangers that are in thy land within thy gates. At his day, when he work a day, thou shalt give him his hire. You pay him. He work, you pay him his money. That day, neither shall the sun go down upon it, for he is poor and set of his heart, set of his mind upon it. 
You looking to get this money. You don't work. You looking to get his money, he's saying. Lest he cry against thee unto the most high. And it be sin unto thee, see? So, are they following the laws? As the most high telling us, how are you supposed to get paid? Work a day and get paid? Or that poor and needy man cry to the most high and it be sin against them? Uh, James, the fifth chapter, James five. James, the fifth chapter. See what it says here. Give you a little something on the rich people. He said, go to now. James five and one. Go to now, ye rich men. Weep and howl. For your miseries that shall come upon you. That's why he told us. Look. In um, Second Ezra. Go to Second Ezra, the eighth chapter. He said in verse 50, this is what he said. For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time, when the latter times, y'all, shall dwell in the world wide. Because they have walked in great pride. See, they walked in great pride. See. That's why he's saying. James 5 and 1. Go to now, ye rich men. Weep and howl for your misery shall, that shall come upon you. Say, weep and howl for your miseries that's going to come upon you. Your riches are corrupted. And your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Uh-oh. The flesh going into fire? So eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Read it again. Ye have reaped treasure together for the last days. Look. That's why it tells us in Obadiah. Go to Ob the book of Obadiah, 17th verse. Y'all talk about reparations. Uh-oh. Ain't like that, camera.